of the year uh, after HBC last year and uh, we have a packed uh, session this time and I'd uh, like to uh, welcome Dr. Desai, Principal of the College uh, and also to thank you for hosting our meetup here and sir, could you just give so a very good morning. A very good morning to all of you. I welcome you all to this Dijiro Parni College. Some of you might have seen this campus or are here first time. And this is a lush green campus which is of more than 10 acres. And many of them when they pass from this Tulsi Bay Road or from the same, they are not aware there is such a green campus is there and located. Uh, near the other. We are fortunate to have this type of campus and we have been hosting a number of events. This is the first time that we are hosting an event for NASCOM. We had events for CSI and other events have been happening over here. Our regular university workshops and so on uh, are conducted. We have about 25 different forums or associations in which we conduct different activities, uh, through which we conduct different activities. This college has the subjects of information technology and computer science right from 11 till postgraduate. And we are also planning to carry out research activities and have some research in IT and computer science in the college. So we are trying to have tie-ups with Microsoft and the other industry and hence we are more keen on conducting the workshops with NASCOM because NASCOM will also assist us in having these types. We want to have a number of activities happening in this college which are related to computer science IT. The only problem with us is we have lack of funds and you know that without funds nothing can be done. Yes, that is only our problem. Otherwise, we have number of ideas, we have uh, necessary faculty, number of things are there. But without fund, nothing can be done. And so, if some joint collaborations activities are there, then definitely we are there to assist and we are there to have this number of activities in the college. Now, uh, I think uh, whatever meeting we have, we will later start with it. I did not uh, <laughs> give you a talk about uh, the college and other things. So once again, welcome you all to this particular event and I think the discussions or whatever information is passed on will be fruitful and it is of interest to everyone and uh, I think whatever stay you have all here, you will enjoy it okay, uh, to the session. Thank you and welcome you once again to the college. Thank you.
looking for a partner to learn to play, they say, hey, uh, we want to work with a partner who's been there uh, in the state for a while. We were talking to a whole bunch of people. And uh, we were in the race as one of the contenders. And we said, hey, you know what, before you sign off, why don't you come down and meet the team and then we decide. So, so when you built the home game, uh, we went to them with a the concept and we said, okay, uh, how do you build a game which is similar to the franchise, then fits the very close franchise and can get as an independent uh, functioning of its own because, because the game needs to be beyond the movie. So we came up with this whole basic section about who were the whole premise of the movie itself was so high adrenaline action racing, bad guy getting chased by a good guy and towards the end gets caught and then with all the gadgets and stuff. So we built a game which is uh, an endless bike racing game that have been quite a few endless tunnels. We said, hey, we kind of do a great risk. So we made it an endless bike racing game where the player played as Sahir, uh, Amir's character in the game. Uh, we created a 3D game that the controls were very simple because we knew that we were targeting an audience which is used to playing a temple and a subway surfer and that sort of game. So we kind of learned from, from those and created various uh, uh, game mechanics. Uh, it was a free to play game, a uh, game that did not purchase, so we had power ups and you could pick up a micro, you could pick up a swimming pool, uh, and then kind of buy from the last store. So, the idea was to kind of how do you create a product which stands up to A, the high production values of two as a franchise, why are they one of the leading studios in India was say, look, we want to compete with the world and we don't want yet another Indian game per se. So it's a day of what, what happens in the present and we can make all that to the Well, we definitely boom the world in this case. So Robosoft is a parent company. Uh, 99 Games is the publishing subsidiary for Robosoft. We uh, at 99 Games have so far created our own more uh, more forms of a casual gaming perspective. This was the first license that we used to got into with and then also into the gaming space for the Indian market. And Yeshla Studios has been you known as one of the oldest and the best in production houses of Bollywood. So when we built the game, we were looking at how we make uh, sure that we launch it in such a manner that it gets the maximum exposure. Uh, the game took around five and a half months to build. And uh, we first launched it with Microsoft. Uh, Microsoft and, and the as those of you have been working over the years with Microsoft on various projects and then we're building this game, they said, hey, you know what? Uh, we think this game will do really well on the Lumia and your phones, and why do we kind of do it as a new VA that we initial platform launch? And uh, if it will support you in terms of giving you a promotion plan, the social, in terms of uh, trying to create a buzz around the uh, featuring on the store, it's online. And so we launched the game initially on the Windows for the platform. Uh, it was exclusive with them on the smartphone platform for four weeks. So on this is October we will have the UBA. Uh, we launched the Java version on Nokia OV on 1st of November. And on the other smartphone platforms, which is Android, iOS, Mac and 10, the game went live after four weeks, which is 19th of November. So the game got immense success across all platforms. Uh, we were featured on the home page of Google Play. Uh, we were featured on iTunes as games inspired by the other so we moved people from other games. Uh, Windows Phone on the other days. It was for we were featured. Google Play had a uh, category uh, again, so we were depending on uh, Facebook App Center, on Nokia, we were featured on the main store, uh, Windows Phone store in various categories. Google Play created a category called Games with Videos. It had games like Plants vs. Zombies, Asphalt 8, FIFA, and Doom 3. And which was, which was like really encouraging for us because the game was in immense love. Today we are close to 9 million plus downloads across the platforms and uh, that being that's been a fantastic event for us. So some of the milestones, uh, we touched 2 million downloads within 3 weeks of launch. 5 million downloads in 2 months. We were featured on the stores within 3 days of launch. Uh, the 
green and 99 days the company. Both, so the 99 days the company became the only company from India to hit a million downloads on the Windows Store on a single title. There have been other companies which have collectively million downloads, but Boom Clock, a million downloads, Boom Million WPA, and we kind of became the Windows Million Downloads Club members. We have had a fairly good run, consistent ratings of 4 plus out of 5 platforms. Like I mentioned, we have over 9 million downloads today. So that means only 55% of this game is from India. A lot of people think, oh, it's a Bollywood game. Well, 90% is from India. And we saw that 45% of our downloads are coming from countries like Pakistan, China. We were surprised that China has been doing this a lot of downloads. Uh, USA, UK, we could understand a lot of uh, Indians over there, South Asian population. But Italy, Russia, Thailand, Vietnam, we were, we were amazed. And, and it was not just that, okay, uh, because it's, it's a Hollywood game. And we got feedback that it's one of the best bike racing games which we have been And then that really helped in uh, the world of small the end users really helped us uh, in getting this game the traction it was getting paid. We had also created a game trailer to promote uh, the game and, and this was launched on the 99 Games YouTube channel. It was launched on the wireless YouTube channel as well as our partners, so Microsoft, CA, all of them promoted to their social media. And only on 99 Games alone we got more than half a million views for the trailer. Uh, wireless was somewhere between close to that and Microsoft. So, so collectively I think by now you would have clocked around 2 million views only on the trailer across all channels. We also had uh, some amount of brand invitation that there were brands who were associated with the movie. We said, hey, you know what, the game looks interesting, you would like to be interested in the game. So, uh, we, what we did was we didn't go about topic bombing all the time. We saw that, hey, which brand would lend itself the game. So, CN was interested in partnering, in the same thing, part, we are partnering with the movie, we would like to come with the game. But we would not just want a holding on the side. So we said, okay, let's do something interesting. So we created what we call the CA Micro Boost Power. So every time you were in the race, you were kind of running out of the box, you could collect the Micro Boost in three of the speed. And you go and you had it in three and we branded it with CA. Uh, as in terms of impression, I think from a brand marketing perspective, we gave them fantastic response. Again, I have had about 60 million plus impressions of the CA Micro Boost so far. It was also a consumable powder, so you could actually upgrade your Micro Boost to map purchase and stuff. So it bought around 7 million plus Micros were used. We then, we then also got Gulf Oil interested. Gulf was part of the company and we said, you know what? Uh, we want to do something, but we are not a, we, are, we don't want to really get into uh, the by then the game was almost close to launch and we didn't have much time to give them an active time. So we said, okay, we have to you know, give them a passive timing, but it's a small of codings and shop friends. Uh, but make sure that we get enough visibility. And we said, don't worry, you will get the uh, impressions. And passive timing, in fact, uh, has been one sixty million plus impressions. Anyway, if you look at it from a CPI, our CPC days with all the brand materials evaluated uh, and we did the most fantastic brands of the park. It was featured and covered across the two sides. Uh, this folks like this model covered us. Uh, there's a team explanation which is more of a hot dog bike uh, riding guys. They kind of uh, featured the game on their store. Bloomberg covered us. So, so on promotion point of view, we had a lot of people talking on the game. Uh, at end user level, all in bias perspective, we had in bias helping us the game through their social reach. Uh, one of the same popular authors in India, Rashmi Bansal, she tweeted about the game today, I love playing this game. You know, that kind of thing was getting a lot of traction. Uh, when we launched the game across all platforms, we actually had Amir and Katrina launch the game at a Right. So that got covered by a lot of the media. Microsoft helped us do on-ground activations. We actually went to college campuses where they did Zoom game championships. And the, the winners uh, from various 
and we just got across 60 to 80 colleges across the region. There are championships for there, the winner got part of the from each of these got part of the final final, and then the national final was in Bombay, where uh, they were competed against each other, and the winner got to be uh, Amit Khan. So we had to thank Sinhala even in between the winner and Amit Khan there. The Microsoft guys were also happy that we got the uh, trophy for the viewers and then also the platform on short over there. Some interesting fun green facts. Uh, if you look at the number of amount of nitros uh, used, the 90 million plus liters of nitros was used in the game so far, which is enough to fill seven Olympic size in the use. Nine million players have played the game, three times the population of Chicago, so they like that one million shot. And so, till the 70 million plus kilometers have been done enough to go around the world with 400 times. So, this was the good part of the game. Right? And the case studies were complete without the fun part of living a game and especially of working with uh, people from the interesting uh, world of Bollywood. So, uh, where it kind of uh, was really interesting also was we were working with a team which was very good of The part team was in Bombay, coordination, the management of approvals, uh, had to go all the way up to uh, Starting to choke up our tools because they are very, the room, movie itself was very closely guarded, so we had very limited access to the visuals uh, and then we kind of managed to impress them with this. Uh, what worked in our favor was we were always the underdog. Right? Nobody expected a company out of the movie to kind of come out and play a game to see this display. There have been other Bollywood games in the past few months uh, where we built. And then we were looking at all those games while we were in this game and we said, okay, will we be able to meet the benchmark? I mean, is, is there enough traction which this game will generate? Because uh, the movie has had a good hype, but Bollywood games typically are considered to be like, okay, a two-week process and the production of it will give you enough time. Uh, but, well, I would say we have been affected by a long margin. I think boom, the game has, from a Bollywood game perspective, probably we have set a benchmark of the highest number of game based on what we have heard so far from the industry. Uh, so enough encouragement for us to look at the economy and the uh, So we are working on a sequel the game. Uh, so we are then extending it just beyond the moon. Now when the franchise is going to get into the whole gaming space in this game. So yeah, that's that's kind of our uh, 10 to 15 minute talk on what we have to do. Hopefully things are work out. Uh, it's, it's at least kind of given the belief to at least one production house in the country that you can do the good game if you do the game that happens enough time to do the game. Don't come in at three weeks before the release and say I want the tempo run quality game. So that's kind of... Uh, and then Maya has been a great partner in that sense. It was enough time. They gave us the liberty to... Uh, they said, look, we know the movie business, you guys know the game business. You guys recommend to us what we can do with you. And that's the way managed to create a game which all of us have to go soft and make it in the game. So yeah, that's the game. I'm going to take care of our questions. I don't know how many of you have been in the game with me. Sorry? Are you just playing it? That's it. Sure. In the case of passive ads, how do you count the number of impressions? Sorry? In the case of passive ads, I'm about to say a whole So, so what we've done was we had integrated uh, Flurry and MMLV2. So we had Flurry. That's a new order, right? Flurry and MMLV2. Then we made certain events uh, where we could track various things. So, so we had mapped out that particular section in the map, saying, okay, every time the player passes through this, uh, it can get blocked at any event. And we also had a back in server control. <coughs> So, in fact, I, the way the game has been built is tomorrow is when another brand wants to come on board, I can just change that code into another brand. So, so even from the server side, we are tracking it and monitoring it, and we can change the image even without updating the game on the app store. Uh, Did you get global features for uh, on all the stuff? So one, 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 one
I think if you attach a value to that, right, and that is that is a good thing. Although they did fund some of the other projects we were looking at. So When you are making a Bollywood movie, what did the producer exactly want from you? Was it just like he gave you the freedom to make changes into the game so that you could get more hits? Or was it like, yeah, he wanted you to stick to the story? So, they wanted us to stick to the story because the uh, plot of the movie is about a, a bad guy killing off a robbery, good guys chasing him. The, the support we got was they told us, look, you guys know the game is this best. You come to us with options, we will tell you how close it is with the movie. But we'd like to be A, as close to the movie as possible, yet independent, so that you don't get stuck because we can't give you enough information about the movie. And if you guys have read about how close the guard of the movie script was, I mean, as it is as it is with any army movies, you're really close to guard in peace. So it was it was something where uh, they gave us a freedom, but at the same time we kept it, kept them in the loop just to make sure that we were not completely off track. So when the game design was finalized, we had a sitting with the director of Victor. Uh, we started with him, we ran into the concept. He said, this is the saying, you know what, we did it this way. Uh, when we were at Alpha, we showed them the game, but Vita, we showed them the game. So, so from that perspective, it was kind of helpful to keep them in the loop on this. So they were in the loop.
and when you play the level, it will have some pieces missing. So maybe this button is missing, and maybe you know some types will be missing. This is a 10 by 10 board, of which certain types will be missing, and they'll be uh, shown here. So you can see how much types are available. And your job is to fit in the correct types in the correct places, like a jigsaw puzzle. And when done right, it will guide the wall from this point to this point. So this yellow, these two yellow things are teleportation lines. This green thing is a jump line. So. So uh, the, the selling point of this game or the unique feature is that you can share your levels on Twitter. Now the way that works is, uh, I knew that I wanted to create something in Excel. This was actually done at the, the main prototype of this game was finished at uh, Microsoft's app test in Bangalore. So Microsoft uh, had a launch event when it was starting to launch Windows 8 in Bangalore, they invited certain students to come on and participate. So I had submitted the idea, I got the invitation, I went to Bangalore. So this was selected as one of the top 8 games in that app. It was made in 48 hours, not this version of this game. It was a prototype version. But I made it in XNA and uh, XNA does not work natively as a metro app, so I compiled it using Google game and so on. But basically this game is built in XNA. But later on I did not uh, really uh, transfer the game over to Windows 8 anyway because the market was not doing well at that time. I don't think it's still doing well right now. But I didn't think it was worth my time to port the game again to Mono game and uh, add, uh, you know, touch and so on. I had to use Unity, so for that. Game. So the way it works is it has a level editor where you can build your own levels. And because it's a hundred, uh, there are hundred types, right? Ten by ten. So uh, the whole level data is converted to a hundred character string. Then you also have, I think, forty characters, no, not forty, maybe twenty characters for uh, the name of the level. And then there's a hashtag social address. You can tweet the level. Uh, then from inside the game, you can search for hashtags. And when you click on the level, it it parses the data and loads the level and you can play it. So, uh, this is a talk about constraint based design. So, I isolated one of the primary constraints is I, didn't, I wanted a level editor and I wanted level sharing but I did not have any medium to share the level. So, I couldn't afford say some professional service which hosts levels and maybe I couldn't afford to spend enough time to integrate that service because it's not a big game to have lobbies and some data storage of so That's when I figured out Twitter would be a good way to uh, use for Twitter would be a good platform to use for data share. And it also integrates the social aspect. So if somebody you know tweets something with some garbage, there's a name and then hashtag social work, you probably get curious and then click on it and then you would see it, it has been tweeted through social work. And you click on that you get redirected to the game store. My next game is uh, Monochrome, which is my most uh, recent game. It, uh, it was submitted as an entry for the Ludum Dare uh, game jam. If you know the Ludum Dare game jam is one of the uh, biggest game jams in the world. You have to make a game in 48 hours about a given theme. So the theme here, uh, this year was, last year, was uh, you only get one. That was the theme. You have to interpret it and make a game based on that in 48 hours. The constraint being that only one person can participate in the Ludum Dare combo. There is like two versions of that. Once the combo, the others are jammed. So I participated in the combo. So it's a solo event. You must release all source code at the end of the uh, event. All content must be made during those 48 hours, including code, music and art. So this is a point and click adventure which uh, tells the story of an old man who for some reason is not uh, he is not able to sleep this particular night he is kept away by something and something draws him uh, to outside his house and it's a point and click game where if you click on any object uh, the description pops up and uh, the object slowly turns black and white so that's why the name is monochrome so if that provides a good way for interaction it, it shows you what objects you have already clicked on and what objects are unexplored. And this game uh, uh, took me by a complete surprise. And, uh, it got selected as the number one entry for the movie. So how Ludum Dare works is you can rate the game on multiple levels. 
overall then graphics art and no, graphics is that graphics audio <coughs> fun and so on and mood so over 2000 games were submitted this is a global event uh, so monochrome uh, was the highest rated in the mood category i have also made a few other games uh, some of them on release some of them released on uh, windows phone and android the top left game you see the release one so that was my entry for the vivo g uh, in that so it got second place at the ngbc and uh, most of the remaining games are released on windows phone and android the river of hope is not released at all uh, the games are released on windows phone and a few on android so these are some of my earlier games and Uh, when I started with say Lego, the drill is one. The rest of the games in this slide uh, were made by me in a different mentality, and that is the mentality which I really want to preach against right in this talk. So I want to suggest a different, uh, a different approach to design game design. So all these other games, I started out with the fact that say I want to create a tower defense game. With X team, and then I go on fitting those two things together, and then making a game. But so, for example, this game uh, here is Spike Fish. Okay, this is Spike Fish. It's an endless runner kind of thing. This is a parrot over the clone of a dog game I used to play. Okay, this is your standard boggle kind of game. This is also controlled by Jaros Kumar. So all of these games are fit into a certain theme, and when I started out making the game, I did not prototype at all. What I did was I, I thought that I want to create a game with X mechanic and X aesthetic maybe. So this is a game about, it's a, I don't know, it's also kind of an end, end, endless one, right? Where first of all you shake the, shake your phone, and the soda bottle gets all filled up, then it launches itself, then you control it with the sky and so on. But the thing is. You can get certain mechanics, game mechanics, when you don't start with the mechanics, start with the constraints. So, if you, I wanted to summarize my entire talk in just one slide, in this slide only. So don't work around your uh, constraints. Build your game around. And the way that works is, firstly, you have to isolate your constraints. You have to uh, realize what your constraints are, and. Uh, A good technique to isolate your constraints is to uh, is to check out four pillars of your game, uh, game design uh, elements. So these are taken from Jesse Shell's excellent book, The Art of Game Design, of Rob Lenses. So he defines these four elements and calls them the elemental tetrad of your game. So aesthetics. Technology, mechanics, and story. You can also apply this uh, concept to monetization, but I won't talk about it. Well. I think I'm not even remotely qualified at all. So <coughs> let's explore what these four pillars are and what the your constraints might be. Now, me being a student, I develop games individually. As of now, I haven't really collaborated with any anybody else. I do most of the work by myself. So I am primarily a programmer, but I also do art and design. Whereas you might be a primarily an artist, but you also might do a little bit of coding, or maybe not even that. But you can always get around that, and that that is one of your constraints. You are good in uh, art, maybe, but you cannot program. That's fine. Uh, so one of my constraints is aesthetics. I don't have an artist brain. And this is what I find that many indie games look shitty because they try to target the photorealistic look. You don't have the resources that Dice has to make battlefield for. So don't try. Don't try to do photorealistic stuff. Isolate what you're good at and isolate what you're not good at, and use your weaknesses in your uh, favor. So one of the things in creativity is if you set constraints. You often get better results. So blank page is uh, difficult to write on. So that is why maybe poetry in some cases is more beautiful than prose. Poetry is restricted to 
certain maybe uh, whatever you know, lines and so on. So firstly, don't try photo in sleep and at night. Almost ever as an input because you will always get compared to uh, other better games and there will be better games because they have better resources and so on. Uh, maybe you don't have a 3D artist at all or maybe you are bad at texturing. If you don't have a 3D artist, stick with 2D. If you want uh, 3D mechanics, if you want a 3D world, if it's necessary, then use something like uh, billboards, something maybe a bit like road rash, where the sprites were 2D, maybe a bit something like uh, Don't Start, which is a 3D game. But most of the world is 3D, but the art is 2D. You can fit in and you'll get style points. Whereas if you try 3D and suck at it, you will lose a lot of style points anyway. So, uh, maybe if you don't have a good texturing artist and so on, you might use flat shade or uh, cell shading like something like borderland dust, way more fancy obviously, uh, way less fancy sorry, and uh, flat shading. So, has anybody played Kentucky Round Zero? It's probably my favorite game of the dinner. Anybody else? I mean, check, check that demo, Kentucky Round Zero. Those guys use uh, a technology called vertex painting where they assign each vertex a color. So it's mostly flag shading. So you can use that to your advantage and it, it uh, looks amazing. Kentucky Round Zero, just check it out. It's an amazing game. And uh, also there are many styles in uh, 2D art. Maybe you want pixel art. Pixel art is an excellent uh, alternative because it's considered to be indie cliche but just go with it because uh, you will produce far better and more art if you are doing pixel art than maybe if you have like skeletal 2D animation and so on. <coughs> maybe you want to do vector art. Vector art is something that Sochobal uses. So vector is flat solid art which was done in illustrator or I get it in Inkscape and then transfer it over. You can also take 3D. You can also use certain effects that general 3D engines have, but use them in 2D. Like uh, if you have played uh, Monaco. Uh, Monaco, right? What's your name? Yeah. And uh, Thomas Ozzolo. If you, if you check out these indie games, they have pretty. They, they are they are 2D, but they use certain 3D dimensionality, especially in Thomas Ozzolo. So it has uh, soft shadows and. Uh, fluid uh, dynamics and so on. But the game looks amazing because the, the developer behind it has recognized its weaknesses and turned them into strengths. You can also do stuff like if you are good program but bad at art, what you can do is you can add parallax. Parallax almost everybody uses to be parallax nowadays. The background scrolls slower than the foreground. And if you are even better you can add depth of field. So as you want to increase the distance you just blur the stuff in the background more. That can be fairly easily done with your program. Then the next is technology. Now, uh, what engine to use? What technology to use? Say, if you are, uh, if you are, it depends. So, what I did around one year ago is I was seriously contemplating whether to stop my prototypes in Unity or in Unreal Engine. So, the issue here being is that Unreal has brilliant graphics, it gives you light shafts, it gives you soft shadows, it gives you anything you want to see, anything that is possible, almost anything that is possible, you get that copy everything in the free world. The issue being is you cannot release the game and uh, you cannot release the game commercially without any strings attached. So these guys charge you some 99 bucks for the initial license and after I think 40,000 dollars you have to pay some percentage of the game to those guys for giving you the engine. On the other hand, Unity is, it gives you way less features. Like you don't have soft shadows, you only have maybe one light on the wire and one light with hard shadows and so on. So the game will not look as brilliant as it will on Unreal. But Unity provides a lot more advantage. They have an extremely permissive license. It's free to use, it's free to sell your game as long as you are using the free version. You can sell your game at any price 
Now they have also added free support for Android and iOS, which is incredible. And another advantage is you can sell your assets. So this happened to me recently. I was uh, prototyping a 3D turn-based strategy game, and I made a nifty terrain system, navigation system. So all you have to do is place 3D tiles in the scene and uh, it automatically generates a graph for you. Basically, I, I uh, implemented a robust traversal system and then I decided that okay, I don't think this specific game is working for me. I'd rather work on something which is totally based. At that point, instead of just quitting and having a, an archive folder where you have that system ready, what you can do is you can sell the asset itself. So that's what I did. I released it on the asset store. I haven't done any marketing yet, still I have one And I'm selling that asset for $55. I get 70% of the revenue, 30% uh, unity gets it. So, in the long run, the most attractive option, I mean, the uh, option that seems the most attractive at the beginning may not be the best option in the long run. You also have to consider that. And again, which platform you want to target, that's an important thing. So, don't create a game for iOS and have gamepad controls on the right. That just sucks. So, that is also one of your primary constraints what controls you can implement in Now, uh, remember here yeah, I am not talking about the mechanics yet. I haven't even decided the mechanics. Maybe I have a faint idea that I want to build, say, a Tungus strategy. But I don't have any core mechanics in place. Now, the remaining two pillars are the most interesting. Mechanics and story. So again, to recap, aesthetics uh, considers the art style, the sound design, and the feel of your game. Uh, technology is the engineer using the platform you are targeting. The mechanics are the game mechanics. What the player does to interact with the game and how the game uh, gives feedback and maybe updates itself. And then the story. The story is the story. So these two factors are fundamentally linked. And the games which really impacted me the most are uh, have an excellent synergy between mechanics and story. So Braid is probably my favorite game of all time. And Braid has incredible synergy between mechanics and story. The reason being Braid is primarily about, at least for me, it's about regret. Has anybody played Braid by the way? Also check out Braid, B R A I D. So the game is about regret. So the, the way the game works is it's a truly platformer. You can jump on platforms, you can uh, collect stuff and so on. The mechanic being if you press the shift key, or whatever, AP on the Xbox controller, time reverses. So, if you fall onto spice and die, you just press shift, the guy will uh, automatically, the time will reverse and he'll be back on his feet. And the designer has used this concept in interesting ways. And the story also suggests stuff about uh, regret. So, that's how the game synergizes between mechanic and story. And that's where magic comes. Also, uh, what I try to do is, uh, while I am designing a game, I try to have a centralized theme and then design the story around that, story as well as mechanics. So, uh, in a game jam, you are at, there's an artificial, there's an actual constraint. So, they tell you, we make a, a game about maybe uh, regret or whatever, you only get one. But while you are making a personal game, try to think about what, uh, what topic interests you. Instead of saying that I want to create a 2D platform, Ask yourself what theme interests you. Maybe it can be fear, it can be decay, whatever. So impose that constraint on yourself and figure out what you want to do, what other games have done, and then figure out what uh, can be done by it. So in Chris Crawford's talk at GDC in 1992, he uh, suggested three topics. He said that, so that was a very early, uh, the industry was in a very early stage at that time. Uh, indie game did not exist and you needed a publisher on uh, to print the game on actual physical media and ship it to shops and so on. No digital uh, distribution. So he isolated three topics that he thought that would uh, make games a uh, more mature medium. He was talking about emotional impact and so on. Games having a two emotional impact on players. And he thought that Three things are important and essential in fact. 
to uh, really achieve that. And I disagree with almost all three. And I think the industry has proved all three wrong. The talk is brilliant by the way, you can check it out. The three topics are, he said, firstly, we should have realistic facial rendering with emotions. That's what takes me. Now I think crisis and uh, whatever, like Sanaproma have proved, or uh, maybe to an extent, uh, two souls, whatever, the PS3 thing, David K. proved that that is not the case. So in order for him to make an emotional impact, facial expressions don't help. In fact, they might be hindrance. They pull too much production resources into mapping facial emotions instead of other stuff. Secondly, you need artificial intelligence algorithms to simulate emotions. So firstly, facial emotions. Secondly, artificial algorithms. So maybe you talk to a girl and uh, uh, you make her fall in love with you through the mechanics or something like that. Realistic characters, well maybe they hate you, maybe they envy you and so on. But games have not achieved that as of yet, but looking at the general uh, game that attempt that, I don't think this would really lead to an emotionally impactful experience. The Sims, right? Skyrim? Uh, those are like pre programs, they are not artificial, so it's not to talk to somebody and they completely done it to By the way, if you check these uh, things out, they are all, all of these things are about removing constraints, not adding them. And I think they remove value as well. So, uh, second is artificial intelligence algorithms. Third is a richer way of interacting with the game. So, instead of maybe shooting somebody in the face, maybe you could give them objects and stuff. Now, that kind of has a good value to it. Maybe it could work. It has not been fully done yet. So a truly rich way of interacting in the game. So you possibly could do anything in the game and then it would impact the gameplay experience. That might or might not work, but the games that have impacted me the most are mechanically extremely, uh, let's say, you don't have a lot of options. They are basically linear. And so the counter examples are to show up and to the moon and get it out there. So just if you want to design games, play a lot of indie games. I compare it to uh, wine tasting. So my friends often berate me uh, for the fact that I don't complete games. I play Assassin's Creed and I leave it. And I leave it in the beginning. I just play it a bit and then leave it. That happens for almost every game. And that's why I compare it to wine tasting. So, or any kind of alcohol tasting. So you can't afford to be a drunk if you are a wine tester, right? Those guys drink a bit of wine and you spit it out of them. So that's what you need to do. You, play, you need to sample a lot of variety in order to get a feel for what the mechanics are. <coughs> so has anybody played To The Moon? To The Moon. Okay. That, that, that game made me cry and it was a really impactful experience. And what that game is, is it's, it's a, a game with very low resolution pixel art. It's done in RPG Maker. So uh, the guy who made the game has very little programming experience. So I had very little programming experience at that time and uh, it was done using basic scripting. You were just an artist who wanted to tell a story. And that's what the game is about. And it has neither of these things. It does not have realistic facial rendering. It, the characters are like 8 pixels by 8 pixels. You cannot have realistic emotion like that. There is no artificial intelligence. It's a very linear experience. And there is no need to of interacting with the game. You just click uh, objects and stuff happens. Like text pops. So, uh, the, the talk is almost done. So, what I want to say is, instead of say saying that I want to create a 2D platformer or an endless runner or a pointed click game, isolate what theme, what is the game going to be about, what maybe if it's a, going to be an emotional game, what emotion it wants to invoke and isolate all your other constraints like aesthetics and technology, what platform you are targeting. And you start getting ideas. I have got a lot of ideas from just identifying my constraints and what I am able to do well. And mechanics, if you play a lot of indie games, you will get one mechanic from here, one mechanic from here and you will end up with a completely new experience. So for example, in Monochrome, what I did was, I, I realized while playing Kentucky Route Zero, that it's a text-based game, Kentucky Route Zero. So you click on something, a conversation starts, 
the text pops up. But they have a system where if there's a comma in the text, comma or full stop, the game pauses for a millisecond. Not a millisecond, but it pauses for a while. It says the roses are red, violets are blue. If the roses are red, it pauses a bit, and then violets are blue. So that little touch adds a lot of uh, emotion to, to even the text. So when you're reading to yourself, you was it makes a difference. So you can borrow these small mechanics from various things. So that's just an example. Uh, these two books are great reading for uh, these two things. So for mechanics, I highly recommend you read uh, The Art of Game Design by Jesse Shell. For scoring, there's this book by Robert Murphy. It's about film screenwriting. And I personally believe that games have a lot to learn from film, but not I mean, I'm not talking about game cinematics, like Mass Effect 3 or whatever. But I'm talking about poor how, how to tell a story, how a story should be structured and so on. So uh, this book is excellent. It analyzes various movies and has information about various te storytelling techniques that are definitely uh, useful in game design. So that's it. In conclusion, yeah, I already had it. And uh, it, so I would suggest this, even if you are an artist, even if you are a programmer, try to pa participate in a game jar. So if you are an artist, you can use stuff like Twine, this, this tool called Twine, you don't have to code anything, it's not text based I don't know. And you could start learning even so small scripting languages and so on. So even for artists, the, the, or the writers, even. if you are just a writer, use Twine. If you are an artist, use RPG Maker or game maker. So, Try to participate in at least one game jam this year. I think three or four go down there that jams happen every year. There are also lots of other game jams. So participate in that. Game jams add another constraint. Uh, in fact, two more constraints. One is the constraint of theme. The second is the constraint of time. You have to build your game in a certain short amount of time. So that adds two more constraints and you can exercise your uh, creative skills with that. And that's it. This is my email ID, my uh, website and my Twitter. So I guess if you have any questions. What kind of users did you get for social balls uh, level sharing? What kind of? Users, like how many people shared their level? So, uh, I'll be frank with you, uh, I, the game only sold like 30 copies, 3030. So, uh, I think around 6 people out of that tweeted also. So, it's a pretty good person. That's the very thing that I would say is that. Because we had level sharing in new and we also had constraints that we couldn't afford, afford the server. So, we used Game Maker, uh, Game Center, very clumsily to right. share levels. Um, I think about 200 people or 300 people shared levels ever out of like 80,000. So, <laughs> I'm just curious how. And another thing is to identify your constraints beforehand. So, don't stumble onto them while you are developing again and so, oh shit, I can do this. The thing being uh, that happened to me while I was designing social work. So, I realized after coding the whole thing that Twitter only fetches hashtags for the last week. So that sucks a lot. So now if you try to search in social world, you can find any level at. So that is not well documented, at least I couldn't find it while I was browsing the documentation. To tell you about recent stuff, recent happenings. So uh, that's a huge constraint that has stumbled onto later. So maybe I would have used something else if I had realized that earlier. Any more questions? So in Sociable. If you want to hear them differently, we should have kind of get it more commercial viable. Firstly, I would have made the game in Unity before probably anything else. That would be my first. Because Excel, I built it in Excel and it takes a lot of effort to port the game over to iOS. And this kind of game has at least as a market on the mobile platform. It does not have a market on the PC platform at all. So I built it as my uh, portfolio game. That was the whole uh, the reason I built it. In hindsight, Unity would have uh, given me a way to have audience. I don't think I could have gotten on Steam. It would obviously have been. Why are you not participating in the total game? Uh, I'm already... <laughs> <laughs>
Hockey Bier. Okay. So what's next? What's the next big thing? I think um, every day we say support by the next big thing. So I, I don't know myself. I'm experimenting currently. I'm uh, getting, I'm contributing to an open source project. Uh, acceptance was 
all of us spend so much money. Why not in gaming? In fact, if I can just do the another example, 2002-2003, when Cafe Coffee and Barista came, all the oldies said, oh, they got such a rupee amount. How many people are saying today now that 1895? They still say. They still say, but the generation of 2002 is not saying it anymore. So I'm saying that in the next five years, maybe people will not say about gaming the same. But we need to keep hearing the same time for the last 10 years. I've been hearing it for the last 10 years. I'm also asking. We have answer in some other channel. Somebody making the game, you will actually know that this is I the forgot that game that is made in the world. The one who made Bingo in Ghana, which one? They were not. Can we guys, can we guys get those guys to tell us? Vitra and Vitra, I don't know. Someone made a lot of them. Yeah, Bingo Bash. Bingo Bash. And I don't hear them. So they are very silent. Because they are very silent. Yeah, they are very silent. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you ask them, right? 
It's an assumption we don't know. I, I, I saw that video, but it's not again India specific. It's again talking globally what we have been doing. No, but he was the borderline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Ramikas are making the Ramikas. Yeah, Ramikas. So, what the Ramikas are making? Critical mass, and then we see the other out there. No, but Nina, the point is that Ramikas are making the Ramikas. India market, Ramikas are making the Ramikas. You pay 25 rupees for Ramikas. Yeah, yeah. 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 Maybe you need the right kind of game for the right for the right kind of yeah. because what rewards compared to virtual rewards, so maybe that's sort of thing. So the reason I mean, 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 yeah, sorry, maybe I'll take and say something. Yeah, I think so. Hello, good job. Back in. Hi, Mahesh here. In hearing, yeah, yeah. your mind gains to win. Uh, we are into game development and publishing. Uh, we, we have the same dilemma. We are the, not same, we have the dilemma. We want to be, we want to be a, a major player in the Indian market. Not seeing much revenues. Uh, the kind of convergence we see internationally is much better than what we see in India. Not that we are uh, uh, national plans deep, but uh, even, even making $1,000 a day outside of India. In the US, is sometimes wrong, but in India, you know, we, we, we hardly see maybe a dollar maximum coming up. So it's an interesting point, I think. Uh, and at the same time, there, there are politics we believe that you know, um, we've seen that you know, the dollar value very normal in the part that you have to necessarily we decide the game between the uh, typically maybe a couple of years ago, five years ago when they huge but like the part by the ten million dollars to make the game and had a success it's no longer uh, the norm. You could get away I could imagine some of like the long PDs building games and, and then even being accepted globally for a dollar because that's not a painful price point. So I, I, I understand that there is a concern that you know not concern the goal is that we need to reduce the Minimum barrier, like just get the after Rao Rajesh posted that like, um, post on face, Facebook, quickly went to check in, and you still can't go to those activities in India. Although technically, I mean, there are providers that are uh, allowing you to go for about 5 to 10 rupees. I think maybe, like, I look at my driver as well, he downloads games like crazy, he doesn't mind, I think, 250 rupees on bandwidth, and he wants to purchase one, but he just doesn't want to spend a dollar. So the idea is maybe subscription to work, you know, what, uh, uh, I think, benefit is building up.
make the pain gain, it will come. Some of don't, don't use pain, don't stop. No. This is like the pain that they is. वो पांच साल How long the train is at the same time? जो दस साल से सुन रहे हैं तो बाकी दस साल भी सुनेंगे। That's one of the reasons we are all still stuck to the same industry. That is a hope. Great way to the number of free games that are available. A lot of like, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, look, it's probably that no loyalty to games like they will like again the big game. I think as the older crowd in India, whenever I talk to them, they're like, हाँ, अभी जो free है मैं download कर रहा हूँ। Kind of, it's kind of working against the thing the games are free and really easily available. So, candy crush will be a play for a week, get something else next week, get something else next week. As long as it's free, I keep trying new games every week. I don't want to see. Why pay when there's another game available? That's also... Why do I pay for something else? Because I can play that for respectable people and I can get that for For sure. I, I don't deny any of what you are saying. How that people will change other than when Five, five, seven years from that data. Speaking of talking about the question, why is all the talk about premium games and targeting it? Why not? Maybe just the thing, paid games, three dollars, four dollars, another dollars. Then, targeting a smaller market, but then again, local market. It's all about the mindset. Maybe I will not agree because I think worldwide is so much of competition and so much of mess to fight around. I would rather focus on India for time. India, I don't have this kind of challenge. I don't have an agree but next to me to fight this thing. Compare it. Generally speaking, competitive games seem to be doing well. At least there are some like ridiculous fishing, even for device 6 in Google. I'm just talking from an India person. In your class, you have to find out how many of your bachelors will get to win either their courses or their courses. But we just need to guys. He is the only guy right now with bands talking to me and missing food. That's why I am missing. Yeah, you have a classic example here, right? Yeah. Do you pursue gaming as a career? How many of you guys want to get into gaming? Anyone? Anyone? So we have... Anyone? 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 I like to do some graphic designing in gaming, so all that graphic stuff comes from gaming while playing and all. And how that designs are being made, and how that actually works. Like, see, we are all the Tokri on demand for others to play Tokri. We are moving the bike, or treating the phone and the bike, and how that's work, and all. I like that to know more about that. So, it is part of learning how to make a deal, right? And, uh, and, and it's, it's a combination of art meeting technology. Yes, the artist will create the bike model, uh, the environment, that the program will make it work in that particular way. So if you it, the, the bike kills, that's where the game engine comes in. So it is a part of the whole process of thinking. About it. So, and depending on what your interest is, you can look at it. And for example, I've known him for many years. He used to write regular about games. That's how he got into game. And he became a game designer. Right? Uh, so, depends on what you want to do. If you enjoy, if you enjoy playing games, just see what, what part of that process do you enjoy. And I got into gaming because I love playing games in the game. So, I started out doing game designs, game concepts, got into production. 
uh, plant code for which my life depends on it, but I, I love gaming. So, so I'm trying to see what else can I do. We've been doing for about 18, 19 years. Since. We then uh, began doing PC games or mobile games or something. Games like Ice Race or Ninja Ages and Grids. They are played mostly on the PCs. But there are any facilities or any. Uh... So the companies which make these games on PCs are now beginning to realize that mobile is equally a strong platform. It may not give you the freedom of playing as it is in the PC, but as a sense of for example, you use of course added on the iPad, like, uh, on the iOS. Uh, so, so there are companies that are now looking at the mobile because that's a big market out there. Right? And they really look at India as a market. There are more mobile users than PC users in India. So, so companies are looking at this and they're like, okay, you know, maybe it makes sense to get these on mobile as well to expand the reach. Need for speed, right? It's available on uh, FIFA. All these games are available on PC, console, mobile. Just want to know that if you have uh, putting a mobile app, Games or and uh, paid app, as a paid app. There are some markets available, markets that are available in mobile, like iPhone, iPhone top or iPhone most, but in Android app. But then that games has been cracked and made available for free. And in that case, what you do for that? Means if you made an update for the games, uh, for the paid app, and that update will be available also for the crack version of that game. So piracy is a challenge. Right? I mean, a lot of, a lot of industries. Not just not just gaming, but movie movie industry, right? I mean, people make probably spending thousands and hundreds of thousands of rupees, but you get it on YouTube in two days because some guy stands with a camera and the because have you heard about black mud? Black mud also. There is most of the games, not only most of the games also, but there are most of the apps which are available for free. Even they are paid or in Google Play Store or any other app store like Amazon. They are most of it track and uh, that apps have been available for free. So in that case what these companies do, that uh, my app is being uh, sold in free and I am uh, doing lot of stuff and work on that app and made it paid so that I can be that at that money. But it is not available for me on They are sold in free. I think everybody is trying to figure out that we are then process people try to solve but it's not never too any software. Even Microsoft is facing that with pirated copies of Windows and Microsoft Office are being used everywhere. So it is a challenge. It is something which you are trying to find a solution to, but it is like hoping for the ideal scenario. This time the DVD had proper The need to get free content is more than the need of the companies to protect. It is always going to be the better the protection, there will be better hackers to be in time. They will find this, they will create a working service. If you need authentication, they will create a working service for authentication. It is, yeah. So those kind of things for. So sorry. Yeah, for PC it is pretty really good. That's why a lot of the bigger publishers release games only on console, which is a lot more difficult, not impossible, but a lot more difficult to track. Or if you look at the mobile ecosystem, that's why premium has taken off. Yeah, the eco kit can hijack or get the pilot. Yeah, yeah. Most of that trading is no free apps are been available. How does that company earn money from that free apps? So it is a dual model, one is for advertising. So you use an app, it works like an in movie or a visa to put apps in your game. So even if you have played games, you can launch a game and see some random ad coming out. Sorry? Even if you call them, then some ad stops comes to me. Correct, right? So every time an ad comes, I make money. So don't disable data when it's there. And it's possible to click on it. It's possible to click on it. And then download it. You all will make more. So one is the advertising model where even if you don't want to pay for the game, you are still kind of forced to see the uh, ad, right? The second is in-app purchase for people. So if you are playing a game, you want to level up, you buy additional coins or you buy a power up, which could also help you in getting rid of the pesky ads. So you buy an in-app, you get rid of the ads. Right? At the same, so you are spending money to progress in the game. So as a player, you have a choice. You can continue playing the free game, keep watching the ads. Every time you watch the ad, I get paid. 
if you don't wash your hair, hair you still pain in some way or other. So it's a dual mode. That's where the premium economy comes in. So it's free to the next thing and then it becomes premium. And what about the downloads? I hear that in Google Play, if you have one thousand and above downloads in worldwide, and that Google Play company pays for your app. What's the downloads? I wish that was the case. It doesn't have a downloads. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so you can send partitions. No, no, no. So, so you need millions of downloads to even make a few thousand dollars right on the game, especially in a free game, because not everybody will keep playing your game all the time, right? And not every person who keeps playing your game all the time will still pay for it. So, so it's, it's, it's in a free game, you need a lot of people downloading your game, and then a lot of people continuously playing your game. Only then you can you hope to make some money. In a paid game, the challenge is not everybody will pay for it. So that, so even if thousand people download your game, but you still have thousand dollars of spending. In a paid game, so it's, it's, a, it's a cash twenty two one. scientific study was done that yes, the games are actually helpful. The study that we did was, are the games actually good? We took 13 companies internationally making games for patients everywhere and stuff like that. And we found only three companies which were actually making the games fun itself. Because the thing is, while the uh, learning happens or the benefit happens, but if the game itself is not good, they are not going to even start the game or play the game, so then the benefit doesn't doesn't even matter. It's the same thing that happens to e-learning or education as such. You first have to make sure that whether it works as a game, then worry about, as you said, shoving your content down the person as such. Because that is the most important part. First, you make the game fun. Once the game is, and you, it's, it's a difficult process trying to convince the client. I understand, I completely understand. Clients are clients and they pay the money so they are always right. But, you have to, it is it is a give and take that you have to do with the client and you have to convince them that you know, unless and until the kid finds the game fun, he's not going to start it. If he's not going to start it, whether the game, 
the game is good or whether the content is good or not, he's not going to consume it. And without that, the learning is not going to happen. And so that that is a big, big challenge. But uh, it can only be done when you are making the game. After it is made, you cannot do anything. That's where the challenge lies. Convincing the client that first make the game such that the kid actually wants to play the game. Whether, I mean, whether the learning is just for kids or whether it's for adults, it doesn't matter. But as long as you are convincing the client first that they need to be able to start the game, be motivated to start the game and it has to be fun, only then will they think about it. That, that is a bigger, bigger challenge than worrying about whether the learning happens. Because learning will automatically happen. If the game is fun and the, the kid keeps playing the game, same thing again and again and again and again, just by repetition, a little bit of learning will automatically happen. Jonathan, you know, the uh, designer we had great and actually uh, we actually have a great talk on this. He gave a talk to the user in the society. When he compares the e-learning to physical exercise, and he joined the gym. So there are all these machines, there are one machine which just uh, targeted this specific person. So that didn't really work out for him. ways or one of the best ways to convince the client that which group is more engaged with the product. It's one of the easier or I am not saying easier but it, it is time consuming, it is uh, consuming resources but it is a way to convince the client that look this is the product where there is no fun and there is just blocks of text and this is a product which is a lot more game, maybe a little less on the content but the engagement factor is far higher when the kid is using this particular product. It is that is the only way. Once the client sees that you know, it is, because then they will they will start thinking about things like you know word of mouth. That if the kid likes it, we tell other kids and they'll buy more. And that's that's what the client is worried about. Right? That uh, will it sell more? Will I make more money? And that is that is the only business argument you can make with it. 